The Jedi Academy on Dantooine is nothing more than a crater that echoes with the ghosts of dead Jedi, and the Jedi Temple on Coruscant lies empty. The waters in the room of a thousand fountains have fallen still in reverence to the fallen Jedi and those now lost. Many Jedi blamed the teachings of the Jedi Masters for Revan's fall and the civil war that followed. Perhaps, but they are Jedi no longer. If the Sith have not already slain them, then they will not help you, nor can you help them. Yes, to aid in the recovery effort there. Many roads lead to Telos, including ours. Not like we have much of a choice, the Paragus astrogation charts being what they are. It is where we must go, and where the Harbinger was bound before our unfortunate encounter on Paragus. You were difficult to find, but coincidence was on our side. When I learned that you were on the vessel, I knew the Sith would not be far behind. When we intercepted the Harbinger, it was crippled, drifting in space. It was a simple matter to board the vessel and rescue you. Unknown to me, however, the Sith were already on board. Just as we made the jump to hyperspace, they fired upon us, nearly destroying the Ebon Hawk. Whatever occurred on board the Harbinger had rendered you unconscious. Though your thoughts were faint, I was still able to find you sealed in one of the cargo holds. True. But as one trained in the Force, you know that true coincidences are rare. I do not know how the Ebon Hawk was able to make it to per... Be silent. We're having a conversation here. Repaired this ship, my eye. Next thing you know, it's going to claim credit for saving our skins. If that little noisemaker says it repaired the ship once, then it can prove it by doing it again. Go on, get! That is not an easy question to answer. This threat is greater than you know, and I do not believe it is a battle that can be fought. Look, enough with the we already. We cannot hope to triumph against them alone. To stop them, you will need weapons, allies, and a teacher. In the end, I fear it may not be enough. You fought in the Mandalorian Wars, and it cost you everything. Are you willing to sacrifice as much again? You are not listening to me. This is not like any field of battle you have ever fought in. Think carefully on your choice. If you choose to fight, if you choose war, it is a path few turn from once the first steps are taken. It carries with it a terrible price. And in the end, you may find you have nothing left to sacrifice. <laughs> your fool's words echo of a Jedi. You have much to learn, but we have spoken long enough, and my wound pains me. If you have other questions, find me in the crew quarters. There we will speak more. Hey, don't stop your long, boring rants on my account. I was just getting sleepy-eyed. Also, in private, we will be mercifully free from the opinions of imbeciles and fools. Look, uh, not like I care or anything, but you might want to go check on our passenger, especially with that hand of hers. I think she was barely keeping it together. I'm surprised she's able to stand with all that pain rolling off of her. Are you blind? If I were her, I'd be screaming like a stuck Minoc. Well, I mean a very strong, manly Minoc. I think she's just too proud to show any weakness. Especially in front of you. In case you hadn't noticed, she won't say two words to me. But she'll talk your ear off any chance she gets. What you think matters to her. A lot. She wants you to respect her. Besides, we haven't got much else to do until Telos. Oh, don't give me that. All it takes is being around people enough to read them. You should try it sometime.
3 I have one last order for you. Our master does not know about this, and I order you to keep it a secret. Every day as we build upon Korriban, more of his memories return, and the bond he and I share cannot hide it from me. He believes a threat lurks on the edge of the galaxy, something that could threaten his power. I... I fear he will go there, and I fear he will not return. If he leaves, he will take you with him. But not I. He knows the bond we share may prove a weakness. But he will take you. If something happens, T3, then I need you to return to the Republic and find me. And if you cannot, then I need you to seek whatever help you can elsewhere, whether Jedi or the Sith or someone in between. This is my last order to you, T3. Obey it, and do not let me lose my master, even if he believes he is protecting me. Come for more answers. There is little more left to give. That does not surprise me. 
any more than you hearing my thoughts when we were apart. The pain, however, was unexpected. If I could, I would have shielded you from it. Save your pity. I am here to save you, not the other way around. I do not need your condescension nor your lectures. If anyone needs training and guidance, it is you. I do not know. I fear that the consequences would have been more extreme then the sensation you would feel upon my death might be less than that, though much quicker. Possibly, yes, and I fear it works both ways. I would not wish to test it, nor should you. When battle is upon us, I suspect our minds are prepared enough to shield each other from the pain. I think we shall not have a repeat incident of what happened at Paragas. I confess its nature eludes me as well, but the bond is strong, and its roots run deep. It seems the force flows easily between us. When one of us manipulates the force to heal or strengthen ourselves, the other is aided as well. A powerful technique indeed, though, as we have noticed, it has its drawbacks. Much has happened in the galaxy in your absence, and since the defeat of the Mandalorians at Malachor V. It is a tale you already know well. Almost a decade ago, the Mandalorians began preying on the Republic, bringing the fires of war to many planets along the Outer Rim. Their predations continued, winning victory after victory, until the Republic finally begged the Jedi Council for aid. Indeed, the Jedi Council counseled caution and patience to assess the Mandalorian threat as the Outer Rim burned. Two Jedi Knights, Revan and Malak, defied the Jedi Council. They challenged the Mandalorian fierceness and brutality on the battlefield with a viciousness of their own. Revan's entrance into the conflict marked the true beginning and end of the war. It was Revan who drove the Mandalorians back into the unknown regions. Yes, I have heard tales of Malachor V and Revan's part in it. I know you served there in that final battle. It must have been a terrible thing. You speak the truth. The war's end was merely another beginning, and what seemed a victory for the Republic was far from it. Many believed the Mandalorians defeated at Malachor V, but the Mandalorians taught the Jedi much through battle. And so it was that Malak, Revan, and the Jedi that followed them discovered their true natures in the Mandalorian Crusade. But you know this. Consumed them? No. Taught them. Defined them? Yes. As Revan and Malak fought the Mandalorians in battle after battle, they grew to despise weakness, just as the Mandalorians did. In the end, the Mandalorians had taught them through conflict shaped the Jedi and turned them into a weapon against the Republic. Revan and Malak and all the Jedi that served them turned against the Republic and the Jedi Order. Jedi fought Jedi. Revan was ambushed by the Jedi and captured. Malak continued to wage war in his master's place, inflicting terrible wounds on the Republic. Wounds that bleed still. As all Sith do, without a strong enemy, the Sith turned on each other. Revan escaped the Jedi and returned to finish Malak, and that was the end of the Jedi Civil War. No one knows, certainly not I. Korriban lies in ruins, Revan is gone, and the blade of war he promised to stab into the heart of the galaxy has withdrawn. Where Revan wanders now, I do not know. It would seem that way from a certain point of view, perhaps. The Jedi Civil War left wounds that have yet to heal. We shall see if the Republic has the strength to survive.
a culture's teachings, and most importantly the nature of its people, achieve definition in conflict, they find themselves or find themselves lacking. Too long did the Republic remain unchallenged. It is a stagnant beast that labors for breath and has for centuries. The Jedi Order was the heart that sustained its sickness. Now the Jedi are lost. We shall see how long the Republic can survive. We shall see. The Jedi Civil War cost the Republic much. The resources of the Sith seemed limitless. The Republic's was not. Fleets of warships, soldiers, and people were lost. Entire planets were decimated. Their inhabitants dead, or refugees. It is a great burden for any civilization to bear. And this new threat. It is a quiet thing. Unlike the Jedi Civil War, it drives at something deeper than the strength of the Republic. It is aimed at you. The Republic was never what was important, ever. It was but a shell that surrounds the Jedi, just as the teachings of the Jedi are a shell surrounding the heart of man. You see, the war, the true war, has never been one waged by droids or warships or soldiers. They are but crude matter, obstacles against which we test ourselves. The true war is waged in the hearts of all living things, against our own natures, light or dark. That is what shapes and binds this galaxy, not these creations of man. You are the battleground, and if you fall, the death of the Republic will be such a quiet thing, a whisper, that shall herald the darkness to come. Ask, and I will answer. Indeed. And was it the same as before? If my suspicions are correct, perhaps the damage the Jedi Council did was not as permanent as they thought. It is not an easy thing to cut one off from the Force. What did you believe? That you suddenly lost your connection with the Force without reason? Indeed it is. It is much like losing one's ability to listen, or being put into a deep sleep, unable to awaken to the galaxy around you. Such a thing has been done before, when Jedi have pronounced sentence on their own, and exiled them as they did you. If not the Jedi, then what did you think was the cause of such a loss? War leaves many scars, but rarely does it blind one to the Force. If anything, conflict and challenge may make the connection stronger, more intense. No matter what horrors you experienced in the war, no matter who you served, it is unlikely that the Force would be lost to you unless another factor was involved. It is possible that such a thing can be undone. Still, even so, the chances of the Jedi undoing such a thing for a traitor is a slim thing at best, assuming they yet live. Our link may have had other consequences. Perhaps you can hear the Force again, distantly, through me. If so, then there is hope. I may be able to teach you, train you to feel the Force again. And if you will not allow me to help you, then other Jedi must train you or undo the damage they have done. Do not honor me, fallen Jedi. Honor it by listening and learning. Do that, and perhaps we shall survive this thing, you and I. I offer to train you to become strong again, to know the ways of the Force, and to hear the Force sing within you as it once did. Then our training shall begin. Whenever I travel with you, I shall impart what I can to you through my words and presence. Ask, and I will answer. These Sith, they seek the death of all Jedi, as have all the Sith, since the Jedi Order was first split. Yes, 
The Jedi Civil War is not the first one of its kind. Thousands of years ago, the Jedi had another civil war that split the Order. It was a terrible thing. A faction among the Jedi abandoned the teachings of the Order, following their own path. They waged war on their fellow Jedi, a war that raged across the galaxy. But these fallen Jedi were cast out, defeated, and they retreated to worlds in the Outer Rim. Over time, they took on the mantle of the Lords of the Sith. But in their hearts, they never forgot the Jedi. The hatred for the Jedi Order burns in their veins like fire and echoes in their teachings. Revan tasted it, as Malak did. In a manner of speaking, they are different from Malak in that they are concerned only with the destruction of the Jedi. For them, it is all that matters, all that ever mattered. It is a different war these Sith wage, a thing of silence and shadow. They strike from the darkness, hiding from the face of the galaxy until all Jedi are exterminated. After all the Jedi are gone, then the galaxy is theirs, no matter whether the Sith or the Republic rules. It is the dark side that shall reign, unchecked. I believe them to be the result of special teachings. Their apparent weakness against you is evidence of this. Those Sith assassins can sense their prey through the Force. It is like a hunger. They feed and grow stronger when they are near Force sensitives. The stronger their prey is in the Force, the deadlier they become. As long as you were cut off from it, you were able to evade their sight. But after Paragus, I fear that you will be no longer shielded from their eyes or the eyes of their masters. The stronger you grow, the more will come. Ask. I do not know. The Sith struck more swiftly than I thought, and they will not stop until they have you in their grasp. If you fall, all the galaxy will echo it. It does not matter where we go. It is not the destination that matters. It is the journey. All paths will take us to the end, whatever it may be, and no matter how strongly we fight against it. For now, we are bound for Telos, and that is enough. Before the war, Jedi who failed their training were sent to the fields of Telos to serve the galaxy, not as Jedi knights, but as farmers and laborers. The destruction of Telos was complete. I doubt any Jedi remain. Yet there may be echoes of their passing. We shall see. Then I am left with nothing more than we had already. My faith in you and your ability to meet what comes. I would see to that fool in the cockpit and remind him of our destination. I would not want him attempting to veer from Telos. He is a fool and an imbecile. His potential lies downwards, not up. Watch that one. His thoughts are slippery. I do not trust him, and nor should you. Such a man serves himself first and his allies next. <coughs>
How's our passenger? She's still aging? What a surprise. Just so you Jedi know, the whole cryptic routine isn't mysterious, it's just irritating. If you really can see the future, you should be at the Pazak table. What was that, some kind of joke? That's what I'm talking about. Jedi talk. You two should start your own little Jedi Academy. All right, cut it out. I get, I get it, I get it. Last Jedi in the galaxy, I get the comedian who runs around in her underwear. Not that I'm complaining, mind you. I mean, compared to the Jedi Queen of the galaxy back there, I'd rather be stuck in an escape pod for a year with you than her. Then she must be royalty, because she's got to be queen of the galaxy to bark out orders like that. Or maybe she's senile. I mean, how old do you think she is? She may have been good-looking once, but it takes some hard living to make creases like that. Yeah. Her face looks like it was plowed by crazed Ord Mantell farmers. Don't tell me you were too distracted by her personality to notice. Whoa, all right, all right, don't get mad at me. Hey, I didn't ask her to stay behind and get her hand cut off, okay? I mean, I appreciate what she did and all, but she could stand to lay off the insults herself, you know? Oh, yeah? Well, how much water you get from a stone depends what planet you're on, sister. Like we have a choice? It's the only place Baragas had logged in their astrogation charts. Well, if you thought Paragus was dead, then Telos is a dying world they're trying to breathe back to life. Should be there before too long. You can check our course on the galaxy map if you want. It's on the wall behind you. Oh, no, no, no. Look, look, I respect your privacy. I mean, when have I ever asked you any questions? I mean, besides that one. No, not much. Except sounds like it was after you. As far as I'm concerned, you handled that pretty well. No more droid, no more problem. Beats me. Sounds like you're pretty popular. If it was built to hunt you down, that is. It could have been around before you even appeared on the scene. <laughs> yeah, well, you got me there. Look, droids, I don't trust them. That one we fought, some of them are built like that. Others just, well, break. In the head. Sometimes conflicting orders cause it. Give a droid too much data or tell it to do something it can't do, it'll crack their behavior module in half. Others just don't get memory wipes and they start going crazy. Speaking of which, I think that little trash compactor's long overdue. <laughs> Trust me, droids were made to break. And most of all, they're predictable and stupid. Well, the astrogation system is voice printed and locked down. But that T3 unit is doubling as the astrogation system. You can try to plot a course, but without that T3 unit to perform the calculations, you'd probably plow us into a star. As long as he doesn't steal the ship, we should be all right. I have no idea. Previous owner, maybe? I'd love to get it overhauled, but that's a major job. Besides, the droid will be good enough for now. Takes all kinds. Maybe someone didn't want anybody taking the ship out of the system, or knowing where the ship had been. Smugglers do it all the time in case the Republic decides to board them. Or so I hear. So? What happened? Don't give me that. There were plenty of times back on Paragus where a lightsaber would have been helpful. So where's yours? Oh yeah? I thought a Jedi was supposed to be married to their lightsaber. Guess I heard wrong. Were you...